Hello viewers, in the last session we have talked about the occupational health and safety management system, how it is implemented in a, in a world class organization. Now, after implementing, how do you know whether we have done correctly or not? You have to measure something. How do you measure occupational health, safety and health management system? That is called safety performance indicators. One of the biggest problem in the industries is we do not know what to measure. And what we want to measure, we do not have really, we do not have data. So, we will talk here in this class, what are the safety performance indicators, how we measure. See, in any organization, what we have thought, we want our systems, our machines, our people, the integrity should be very high. We have talked this, which is called occupation, operational integrity, mechanical integrity, human integrity should be very high, should be as we require. What is integrity? Integrity is nothing but behaving, doing the way you design. So, the machines, the processes, the people should behave the way we have designed. Then we call the integrity is very high. To have this integrity, we have implemented occupational health safety management system. Understood, we understood the hazards very well and how these hazards are uh, uh, coming out. So, hazard is divided into three parts. One is hazard element, other is initiating mechanism, third is target. So, hazard is divided into these things. So, thoroughly we have to understand what is the hazard elements, what is the initiating mechanisms. Between hazard element and initiating mechanisms, you should put risk control systems. So, these are the risk control systems and all these initiating mechanisms should be subjected to these risk control systems and we, we have to see whether they are performing very well or not. So, the safety management, this is what, this is nothing but the safety management system. How, how we are going to do, find out the safety performance indicators, we will we'll talk now. So, safety performance indicators, the hazard initiating mechanisms are responsible for the incidents and associated cons consequences. Hazard is there everywhere as the technology increases. The initiating mechanism is the thing which will initiate the hazard. So, initiating mechanisms are responsible for the incidents and associated consequences. Hence, we put we put risk control systems to control these initiating mechanisms. How do you know whether the risk, risk control systems are working good or not? That is safety performance indicators will give this information. We have to find out these safety performance indicators. Once you find out safety performance indicators, you apply analytics to get uh, prescriptive and uh, prevention of these incidents. Now, we will go more detail on this now. Why do we measure? Measurement leads to confidence. Anything you measure, it will give you confidence. 
too many organizations rely, rely heavily on failure data to monitor performance. So, if you want to rely on the failure data, some of the failures will happen once in long time and that time you cannot do anything. So, we have conducted one workshop in one of the organization where 100 executives of 2 years experience young executives energetic executives they have participated. We have asked what do you measure in your organization to know the safety performance. They told lost time incidents, fatalities, medical treatment cases, vehicle co collisions major gas leakages, drunken driven cases, road accident, these are the things they, they measure uh, to know the safety performance indicator. Fatalities, if the, if the fatalities not happen, what do you measure? Last time incidents, you wait for the last time incidents and then only you measure. If by chance last time incident is not happening, that means your safety performance is very good. So, the organizations across the world normal organizations measure these things, but measurement of these things will not give you any, any improvement in the safety management system. For major hazard installations, process safety risk will be significant aspect to business risk. One of the organization, uh, major process risk happened after 100 years. Meanwhile, these people are thinking the processes are very, very, very good. Actually, they are not very good. Discovering weakness, discovering weakness in the control systems by having major incident is not good. So, you are, you are, if, you are, if you feel my system is weak only after major incident, it is not good. Think of uh, BP, uh, British Petroleum, one of the incidents in US. People are telling your system is not good. They said, no, 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 I am not having major incident. But major incident happened. Uh, what you what you require is early, early warning through measurement of dangerous de dangerous deteriorations. Early warning. We require early warning before major uh, deteriorations. That will help us. How the companies are benefited by the safety performance indicators? Increased assurance to the risk management system. It will give, it will give you more assurance that risk management system is working correctly and or what improvement should be done. Demonstrated the suitability of the their risk control systems. It will tell yes my risk control systems are doing very well, doing good or my risk control systems I have to make improvement. You avoided discovering weakness through costly incidents. By putting safety performance indicators in place, you need not wait for the costly incidents. Before any major incident happens itself, you, you should be come to know. So, you can avoid major incidents. Only these, these many organizations who have put the safety performance indicators in place, they have stopped collecting performance regarding the uh, re regarding major incidents. They stopped collecting and reporting performance information which was no longer relevant. Un unnecessary Un irrelevant information they stopped collecting, made better use of information collected already. So, the safety performance indicators will have plenty of data, huge data. When you have huge data, you can, you can do very good analysis, put the analytics and take the benefit of it. There are two types of monitoring. 
one is active monetary other is reactive monetary what is active monitoring active monitoring provides feedback of the performance before an incident happens before any incident happens it will give you feedback that is called active monitoring reactive monitoring it is identifying reporting on the incidents once the incident happen then you will get to know so reactive monitoring involves identifying and reporting on incident to check the control of the place adequacy and all these things so there are active monitoring reactive monitoring active monitoring will tell you beforehand reactive monitoring will have will will tell you after after the incident happens now let's talk about what is the leading indicators what is the lagging lagging indicators this is the this is the uh, topic which we'll be discussing in more detail leading indicators will give you <coughs> effectiveness of the system whether the system is effective or not leading indicators will give you the effectiveness of the systems they are the part of the active monitoring what is the example how do you know how do you know the effectiveness of the system so compliance to inspection schedules if it, you if you want to know you need deterioration happening you have to inspect it unless you inspect you will not come to know so compliance to inspection schedules is the leading indicator compliance to pre the planned maintenance schedules preventive maintenance schedules compliance compliance how pme is happening i am not talking about that but compliance to those schedules compliance to your programs compliance to your observations so it will tell the effectiveness of the systems the lagging indicator talks about the weakness of the system so lagging indicators are a form of reactive monitoring requiring reporting of specific incidents lagging indicators show whether the desired safety outcome is happening or failed lagging indicators will tell the desired outcomes have failed or not these lagging indicators need not tell after the total failure these lagging indicators will tell the safety outcome he is getting achieved or not what are the examples hydraulic joint total failure of hydro hydraulic joint is the deterioration the sweating of the hydraulic joint small leakage is a lagging indicator if the speed limit is 30 to 40 km if somebody is going 41 it is a lagging indicator to know the condition of the condition of the vehicle flat tire is a lagging indicator it has happened but flat tire is a lagging indicator rusted scaffoldings rusting on the scaffoldings will lead to the failure but rusting itself is a lagging indicator once once you understand see the rusting then if you if you take action scaffolding will not fail some of the bolts have become little loose nothing has failed the joint has not failed but it has become loose it's a lagging indicator because if if you don't address the looseness then it will fail so lagging indicator starts from looseness so what what in the processes process has not failed but there are fluctuations 
they are lagging indicators. So, lagging indicators, leading, leading indicators, both are important to the organization. We should not feel lagging, lagging indicators is something bad. See, the lagging indicators are ca called downstream indicators, historical indicators, or trailing indicators, or negative indicators also. Some people call. The leading indicators are upstream indicators, predictive indicators, heading in, people call by these names also. <coughs> we have to have both lagging leading indicators and lagging indicators. Both are helpful. Please mind the lagging indicators what we are talking is not the total failure. Symptoms are failure, small failures, weakness of the system. Failure of the system we are not talking, weakness of the system we are talking. So, the weakness of the system you should take, the, the effectiveness of the system you should take and you should, you should monitor your whole system, your management system you should decide. So, taking both weakness of the system and effectiveness of the system is called dual assurance. So, by taking these two people work for, uh, people take these two leading and lagging indicators as system guardians. Who is guardian? Guardian will help you, guardian will guide you. So, these lagging indicators, leading indicators are taken as the system guardians. The combination of these, these two will make our intervention program, how to do it. All the, all the intervention programs, your strategies, you will do based on these things. So, this is dual, dual assurance system. So, what, what is dual assurance? You have the initiating mechanism. For the initiating mechanism, you put the risk control systems. Always the initiating mechanism, if you do not control, then it will result into the target or the consequence. So, the initiating mechanism, at the initi initiating mechanism, you should not allow the the risk hazard initiating me mechanism to function. You have to put the intervention there between the hazard element and hazard initiating mechanism you will put. So, you, you have put the in you have initiating mechanism, you have put the risk control system. Now, the risk control system, how effectively it is working? The what is the outcome of the risk control system? What do you expect? An outcome is the desired safety condition. Is it happening? If you say, if you say the joint should not fail is the outcome. So, lagging indicator is the looseness of the joint, the vibration in the joint that is the lagging indicator. So, by measuring those things, finally, you will see this outcome will, will be achieved. Similarly, the leading indicators are, are the process or input indicators. So, by, by putting this risk control system, you see whether the system effectiveness is working or not. The process or inputs are the important actions or activities within the RCS that is necessary to deliver the desired safety outcome. So, this risk control system whether it is happening or not, we see the process, process, processes and inputs. Beforehand, we will come to know system effectiveness. So, here, here we are seeing the weakness by, by the deterioration, here we are seeing the effectiveness by whether the processes are happening or not. 
the processes are happening or not we will see by, by leading indicators. We will get the results of this, results of this both we will get it, we will get it here, we will analyze and we will do our performance and review all those things. So, what are the what are these indicators in, in, in GIST? What we have discussed is you have hazard, you have harm, incident. The hazard not to become incident, you put the risk control systems. Okay. The risk control system, the health of the risk control system, condition of the risk control system is the lagging indicator. The effectiveness of the risk control system is the leading indicator. Risk control system is the lifeline. Hazard not to become harm, the risk control system's health effectiveness is very important. Okay? That is what we are talking. These are the leading indicators will tell the what is the health. Le lagging indicators will give what are the weaknesses? What are the weaknesses? So, measuring both will help that is the safety performance indicators. There is a six step process made by uh, HSC which is which is pretty good for finding the safety performance measurement. That is one first step is establish organization arrangements. Whenever you are going to do right, right to work, right initiative, you require a champion, you require a team to implement that is the first step. Second step is scope, what is that you want to do? You need not have leading and lagging indicators for everything. For already the, the hazard, the risk is alert level, you need not measure those things. So, you will define the scope at the organization level. What is that we are going to do? Because every, every data collection, every it, it all costs money. Third is, so identify, so in the based on the initiating mechanisms by putting through the risk control systems, you have to identify set the lagging indicators, you have to find out the lagging indicators. So, for finding the lagging indicator, for when you pass the uh, risk into risk control system, we will see what is the outcome. From the outcome, we will decide what is the lagging indicator. Then we will do the leading indicator. Leading indicators identify critical elements of each risk control system. Those actions, processes which must function correctly. What are those things? Percentage of inspections, percentage of compliances, all those things. If, if, if those are not happening, if it is performing at 70 percent, you, you should think whether it is, it is acceptable or not. So, all those, all those leading, leading, leading things, leading indicators we will perform. So, we will we'll find out the leading indicators. So, every leading indicator you, you, you should know, you, you, you need not get alarm. So, at what at what tolerance, at what level, what level if suppose if the percentage of percentage of inspections is say 95 percent, 5 percent is less, are you supposed to become alarm? You have to understand. If it is coming to 70 percent, probably there you have to become alarm. So, you have to for, for different processes, you can put the leading indicators, set the, set the tolerances. By setting these tolerances, you will reduce the efforts. Otherwise, for every small deviation, you need not become alarm. It is something like tolerances. While manufacturing a component, if you put the very tight tolerances, then the cost will be very high. 
Similarly, here also if the leading indicators if you put very tight tolerances then the efforts will be very high. The leading and lagging, lagging indicators huge data you will get. The data collection process is called the descriptive analysis. You have to collect this data. We are not collecting fatal accidents or injuries or failed components. We are collecting lagging indicators, the, the health of the equipment, the effectiveness of the equipment, the weakness of the system, the effectiveness of the system. We are collecting it. Those data which will be very, very high, it is a big data you can use uh, in, the, in the present trend is using data analytics. You can use this data anal this put in the data analytics, all the techniques of the data analytics, you can you can get the, the predictions. We have seen uh, the IIT Karakpur has done the data analytics for one of the organization, very good organization, but the data is not at all uh, good data, right data. It, it is all rubbish data for the data analytics point of view. So, the performance indicators, good lagging and leading indicators data will give you very good data for the prediction and prescription. That is one of the very good advantage of the putting the safety performance indicators. So, this is tolerance. At what level people should get the tolerances you give it to the leading indicators? At what level the organization should be worried? So, let us see these are the uh, these are the scaffoldings, these are the scaffoldings. So, scaffold inspection violations. So, scaffolding inspection violations, how many, how many scaffolding inspections you will be doing? So, if you do not do scaffolding inspection 100 percent, then it is very, 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 very deterioration for the effectiveness. Scaffoldings, whenever we put, you have to have 100 percent inspection, there the deviation is 0. Replacement of defective valve in blast furnace gas lines. Suppose if the valve is defect, defective. So, if it is if it is small detection, you need not replace immediately, there is time. Inspection failures of process critical equipment. If the process normal equipment inspections are not happening, you, you may have tolerance. But if it is the process critical equipments, you should have 100 percent uh, inspections, you need not have tolerance. So, there the acceptable limit is very less. For the normal equipments, your acceptable tolerance is more. So, you will be putting the tolerances depending upon the critical equipment, depending, depending upon the critical activities on the leading indicators. Let us go for a say case study. Case study will bring you more clarity. This is this is the offshore a ship coming and unloading the various materials into the into the offloading gantry through the offloading gantry through the pipeline to the bulk tank filling and storages. From there, it will be loaded into road tankers, it will be dispatched to the customers. This is the case study we are taking. So, case study shows the company, company operates constant bulk storage uh, business handling 
chemicals. So there is an offshore. At the offshore, there are uh, uh, tankers. Tankers provided. It is. It is. They are called bulk tanks. They are all loaded into the bulk tanks through the pipelines. It works, and the road tanker will come and take from the bulk tanker and supply to the equipment. to the customers this is the this is the whole of the case case study so this is the ship this is the bulk tankers it is unloaded in the bulk tanks from there it it will go to the road tanker this is the pipeline okay what are the what are the materials they are handling they are handling very very hazardous materials hexane heptane gasoline all these things they are very very hazardous materials so these are the bulk tankers these are the bulk tankers there are two sides this is one side this is the other side the ship will come here from here the pipes will take it to the bulk tankers so what are the main stages of the process safety indications which we have which we have discussed so appointing the champion who will drive the whole initiative then we have to identify the scope then we have to get the lagging indicators the we have to find out safety outcomes and the lagging indicators then we have to find out the leading indicators then we have to rest is the uh, analysis part what are the hazardous scenarios here hazardous scenarios means in our in our uh, safety triangle we called hazardous elements in the whole process which we have discussed storage tanks is one of the hazardous element so what will what will happen in the storage tanks loss of liquids loss of liquids uh, in the bunds the liquid the tanks will have bund bund is if any any case if the any leakage happens the bunds will hold the liquid it will not go to outside so loss into the liquid from the tanks loss of liquid outside of the bund bund fails it will go to outside fire and explosions fire and explosion in the tank fire and explosion in the bunk bund and fire outside these are all hazardous elements for the storage tanks for dock lines loss of dock lines means the product transfer lines pipelines all those pipelines loss of liquid loss of liquid from fixed pipelines like couplings valves fire at the dock road tanker road tankers are they will take the material outside so while filling road tanker while filling loss of liquid from the transfer lines if the liquid goes here and there loss of liquid from the road tanker fire and explosion so these three storage tanks dock lines road tankers they are the hazardous elements now these hazardous elements we have to see the initiating what are the initiating mechanisms for this the target target is so if the if the initiating mechanism fails we'll have toxic gas cloud major fire at the site major fire at the dock major fire all 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 are very very hazardous very very uh, dangerous for the organizations you may see something more also we have put some 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 of the outcomes i have put in the safety triangle this is the outcome now we'll go for the initiating mechanisms
What are the initiating mechanisms? Failure of flexible hoses, couplings, pumps. Failure of flexible hose pumps, wall, fixture pipe. Why do they fail? Because of the because of the wear, corrosion, damage, over under pressurization, fire explosion. These are all the hazard initiating mechanism or overfilling of bulk tank. If you fill more, it will spill out. Overfilling of road tanker, if you fill more, it is initiating mechanism. So, accidental release, valves not closed, valves are open, connections, not, connections are not made correctly, they are the initiating mechanisms. Some more initiating mechanisms, physical abrasions, vibration, corrosion. So, corrosion, why the corrosion will happen? Corrosion will happen because of the reaction of the mild with the mild seal, incorrect correct pro product transfer, the tra product which is supposed to be transferred something more, something different you have transferred, damage damage, collision, impact by vehicles, damage during use, work activity, welding, grinding, which are not supposed to be done. If you have done, it may damage the whole situation. Over uh, under pressurization, What are the initiating mechanisms for, for fire and fire and uh, explosion? Failure of earth burning, failure, failure to ensure flow rate, incorrect equipment selection, failure of nitrogen blanking of tanks or failure of control hot work, you are not controlled properly hot work, hot work means welding and all these things. So, a spark has come and has fallen on some cloud. So, what are the initiating mechanisms for overfilling? Poor communication, people have not communicated. So, overfilled, instrumentations have failed, the instrumentation failures in Bhopal gas disaster people thought instrumentation is failed when the pressure is increasing. Actually, it is not failed. So, many times instrumentation failed. So, you think everything is good, but instrumentation is showing wrong. Failure to tank gauging, the gauges in the tanks, they are not doing very, very well. So, accidental release. So, what are the initial initiating mechanisms for accidental release? Leaving valves open valve is not open. Incorrect coupling, when you have to couple, you are not coupled properly. Omission of blank blanking plates. So, by putting the risk control systems, the HSC has worked very hard in this. So, they said you need not you need not find out what should be the risk control system. Out of these 10 risk control systems, 9 are normally common to everything, every scenario like planned inspection and maintenance. If you put planned inspection and maintenance, many things will be, will be arrested or staff competence. If you have good staff competence, mistakes will not be done. So, planned inspection, maintenance, staff competence, operating procedures, instrumentation, the changes in the plant, changes in the design, communication, permit to work, permit to work especially it is seen across the world 80 percent of the major accidents happen because the energy isolations are not done. So, you can put energy isolation, energy isolation is one of the risk control system, emergency arrangements. If, if anything happens, the risk should be controlled. 
they are called emergency arrangements so these nine are almost common but depending upon the site you can add much more for this site we have added earth bonding system earth bonding system will not be there for every site or if you, if you if you particular site working at height is very important you can put working at height so the nine risk control systems are common for all these things so one or two three you may add as per your site so we'll stop here next session we'll take this forward the case study we'll take it forward in the next session thank you